Dune is a legend among table gamers. You have to play this game a multitude of times to fully appreciate its complexity and its nuances. If you are not a fan of games where you can lose everything on one play, you will not enjoy Dune. We're finally doing it. We're playing the infamous Dune board game. The goal of the game is simple, control three of the five strongholds, but that's much easier said than done. Dune is infamous for its insane complexity, game-breaking asymmetric factions and cutthroat political system, where even the smallest mistake can be catastrophic and have you watching the rest of the game from the sidelines. And guess what else? This is my first ever game of Dune and I'm gonna be playing with some of the best Dune players out there. And they have thousands of games played between them. Will I pull out the insane underdog victory or will I be crushed under the weight of a competitive board game that's been growing in popularity since the 1970s? Watch and find out. All right, welcome to another Dune Invitational. And uh, this time we've got a special guest with us, Horsky. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. It's his uh, first time playing classic Dune, but as I understand, you play a lot of uh, Dune Imperium. Yeah, so I have the most important aspect of the game down, the lore. We'll see if that can guide me. So the first thing we had to do was pick the factions. And believe it or not, I did do a little bit of prep to see which factions I would want to play. Ideally, I would get the Bene Gesserit because they have the highest win rate. But I also had something prepared in case I got the Harkonnen or the Emperor. And unfortunately, this is what happened. Draw a token from the bag here. Oh, okay. I am the Spacing Guild. And once I realized I got the guild, I had a critical decision to make. Since I got a bad faction, do I just play for fun or do I try hard and play to win? And this is an important decision to make with the guild because the guild has their own special victory condition, which is actually really unfun for everyone else involved. The guild can win in the normal way like everyone else by controlling three strongholds or four strongholds if you're in an alliance, or if they're able to stall the game out all the way to round 10 and nobody has won by that point, the guild wins by default. So I have an opportunity here to just drag on the game forever. And believe me, a 10 turn game of Dune takes so freaking long. But you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to win. So now every player gets to start out with one treachery card. And these treachery cards can do a million different things. There are weapons in there. There are useless cards in there. But uh, this is our first stroke of luck in this game. Uh, so everyone's gonna get one treachery card to start? Okay, I just got the strongest weapon in the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this is a good one to get. To understand why this is such a big deal, I very briefly need to explain Dune's combat system. Whenever you have troops in the same location as someone else's troops, combat will begin at the end of the round. And the way combat works is, you dial a certain number of troops, add that to the value of the leader you send to battle, and whoever has the highest number wins. In addition to just sending troops and a leader, you can also play one weapon card and one defense card. And there are basically two types of each, projectile weapon and defense, and poison weapon and defense. If you play a projectile weapon, and your opponent plays a projectile defense, the leader does not die. But if you play a weapon that your opponent doesn't have the defense for their leader dies and they don't get to use its combat strength in the battle. So these weapons and defenses are very important and can turn the tides of battle very easily. The weapon I just got is the las gun and this weapon cannot be stopped by defenses. The only downside is if I play the las gun and my opponent plays a shield defense, there's a nuclear explosion that goes off and everybody's troops are destroyed in the battle. So while being a very powerful weapon, there's still a slight drawback. Fun fact about your faction, you can do whatever you want this turn, this phase. You can go outside your turn. Normally, you go from the storm counterclockwise, but you as guild can choose to go before or in between anyone else. Well, but in most cases, the best part of that power is that as guild, you could just always go last, which is the mm -hmm. best position. You, you can always avoid an attack, pretty oh, much. Yep, that sounds like my kind of play style. There you go. Enjoy. So as I alluded to earlier, my strategy now is just going to be sit around and try to drag this game out as long as humanly possible. And I'll only interject if it's to stop somebody else from winning. So I end up doing a lot of sitting around. I actually don't even think I did a single play the opening round. And luckily for me, no one else really did anything either. The one person that actually made a play was the Atreides player and they attacked the Harkonnen. Ooh. Interesting. Ooh, well, that's rude. Very. And crazily enough, despite the Harkonnen player having way more available troops to fight in this combat, they lost. Because when you actually spend the troops in combat, they're lost from the battlefield. So you're incentivized to not want to spend too many and still win. So unfortunately, they got a little bit too greedy and lost to the Atreides player 4 to 5.5. Unfortunately for the Atreides player, they only had one troop to spend and they spent it. So the Harkonnen player lost and lost all their troops and the Atreides player spent their only troop. So nobody is left in the stronghold. We move on to turn two, everyone. And I'll be taking my worm right, unless I get Karamid. Yeah. 
So after every round, we reveal cards to see where the spice is going to be for the next round. Spice being the currency of the game that everyone's competing for. Sometimes, however, there won't be a spice card, but there'll be one of these sandworm cards. And this is my favorite part of the game because it's only when these sandworm cards show up that you're allowed to form alliances and break alliances. Alliances are incredibly important. You can form an alliance with one other player. And if both of you can manage to get four strongholds, you win the game. And you also start to share powers with each other. You cooperate more. I'm incredibly new to this game, so it's important to me to form an alliance with one of these really strong players we can now make alliances what the hell is this yeah sure absolutely <laughs> i'm uh, not even i'm not even going to think about it hell yeah i'm wondering if i want an alliance if oski wants one then i'll ally with them but so i am willing to ally anybody at the moment because the bg have a karama so i rather ally i'll offer harder. the um the cursed alliance oh wow okay, i'll uh, yeah. offer the okay yeah yeah. Just, uh, I can also break the alliance and just let you get gobbled up. So, like, don't rely on it unless, yeah. you know. Mm, this is not what I want to hear from my new alliance partner. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll try not to backstab you as much. Hey <laughs> there, thing. Pal. Here are all the ways I can betray you. <laughs> And after every round is an auction phase where players are allowed to bid on different cards. I'm going to fast forward most of that just because I don't think it's too relevant. But if something relevant does come up, I'll show it. So I was tempted to just sit around and do nothing again for another round, build up my resources and be in a really good spot to try and end the game if an opportunity arises. However, an opportunity did arise for me to disrupt the gameplay of a different team. That being the Atreides and the Harkonnen. They were trying to collect spice on their turn, which is really important for them because they don't have access to a lot of resource generation through their factions. They're probably the poorest team of factions in the game right now. So if I can come in and fight them and stop them from getting the spice, it'll be a really big deal because they'll set them back for a while and I won't have to worry about them trying to end the game sooner. Here's how that played out. What do you think of fighting the Atreides here? Denying them I think spice? it's a good idea if you feel confident about it, but you'd have to ship like... Like, you'd come in earlier in Storm Order, so you would win ties. You'd need to ship down four to, like, force them to, like, potentially dial, depending on your hand. Oh, that is true. Okay. And you'd have to risk You're in the, uh, the scenario right, right now where it's guild turn See two. See what happens. You can always buy cards back. Someone's already preventing the win, so you can realistically do nothing. Hmm. The thing is, like, um, Emperor and BG potentially might lose a lot in these battles, so it's nice to kind of, like, make these guys lose a bit as well, so they're on even footing, so we don't have to do much for stopping wins. I think I agree. But I, I think this is a good move to, to mess with them as a guild player. Yeah, it, it just cost me spice and it cost you troops, so would you like to want to make a deal about spice? We don't really or need I just spice, give you... we just want to prevent them from getting it. Yeah, but yeah. you're well, like, if he's bribing option. spice to you. If they're offering that's... spice, it's, it's usually a sign they can't beat you. So, oh, like nice. you think, like, I, oh, like wow. it, 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 it cut, I'm gonna offer you six spice, so you don't have to die. For, for five forces of you, don't have to die, right? Because that's the only way you're gonna beat me. The objective here isn't to like get spice by the way, Oski. It's to prevent them from getting spice, even if you lose stuff for it. So, like, you can always get stuff back in the, later in the game. That is true. Yeah. Okay. I reject your. Uh... You're measly yeah. offering. Oh. Mind you, I could also just be saying this to screw with you and make sure you lose Paige, stuff. Paige, you would never do that to me. <laughs> no, no, I have never. We are, we are great allies. <laughs> to be fair, it's stuff I've done to allies before, but like, I feel like it would be way too mean. Is this trouble in paradise I hear? Nope, still in paradise. Oop. Perfect alliance. Yeah. Okay. I ask your question, okay. Atreides. Uh, what leader are you playing? Oh, this is a good question. Let's see here. Cool. Shall we... Oh, Ashley, are you comfortable doing this on your own? No, let's discuss. <laughs> okay, should we head to a separate chat then? Okay, where are we at? Alright, I have to pay this? one spice. Okay. Hi. Um, so, what's your hand looking like? Okay, Is there a, I, I'm feeling it? pretty good about this one. I have a last gun, and they just got rid of their shield. So I feel like the leader kill is like on lock pretty much. So I'm pretty much... Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, you just yeah. you just play last gun, and you play... Um, like you dial four four probably yeah okay and then just let's go i just do my four. weakest leader then yeah and weakest leader okay cool because i think you win ties i do yeah i think i'm before if it. you yep. have yeah yeah no no you just straight up screw them that's <laughs> great okay beautiful okay okay i've returned okay i will go for my guild representative Ooh, one. that Nine. guild rep has got killer sideburns i tell you he's a handsome man I mean, if you have a cheap hero, you could always uh, answer with that as well. But Yeah, the cheap if, hero can't be traded, so you can just use that. If you uh, did have a cheap hero, you might want to get it out of your hand, because it's not a great card, if you did have one. Okay, yeah. so and with that, that would change my answer then, or...? 
Yeah. Oh, without you could choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I think I'll be playing a cheap hero. Ah. <laughs> Absolutely guaranteed. <laughs> I'm afraid to mess this up. And then up. when you're ready, just press R on it. Uh, okay. Ooh, oh, last gun. Wow. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. That's... Six. Yeah, the last gun is a very scary weapon for the table to know you have, especially when there's a Benny Gesserit who can force you to play it, and then they can play a shield. Nah. Luckily, the Bene Gesserit would never do such a thing. Congratulations on your first combat win, Oski. Thank you, it feels good. And I retire. Storm, that is a Thalamix played by the Emperor Rus. Ooh. So essentially, uh, the Emperor had a force next to the shield wall during the storm phase and played this card. What that means is that Carthag, Arakeen, and the Imperial Basin are now vulnerable to the storm. So you're not safe in there like you are normally in a stronghold. Ooh, damn, okay. Well, luckily, this storm is like nowhere near here. But yeah, yeah that's like four or five turns. Though. Yeah. Yep. Spice so now blow. we flip. Spice blow. Oh. We so have away is another um, worm. In... Oh, Sorry. hello there. Now, the question is does Next the PG time. really break lines with uh, uh, oh. the Emperor? Yeah, what are you saying, oh. huh? What do you think? Depends oh, who they offer it to. I just want to point out what radius the Tarkon is thinking of betraying you, just in case I, I decline the offer. Just, you know. Um, I mean, listen, I'm sure Melster can respect the play. Yeah, of course, but I am going to preemptively <laughs> break this alliance. I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're tight knit, right, Rab? Um, right, Oski? Oh, yeah, we're chilling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, BG, you want an ally? <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. You see, the reason why I have... in all seriousness, is this it? is a perfect opportunity for like, if, like I'm not, I wouldn't, but like it's a perfect opportunity for a from and VG alliance just because like my hand and like the fact that Your they may state. end up in the troops. Yeah, pretty much. True. I will say that there's a ah. grace period until the next worm. <laughs> uh, Oski. That, okay, that's all okay. I'll say. I would oh, probably I still really... be your ally, but if something changes, that's that's the grace period. Is you know what I, I, that. I won't backstab until then. So unfortunately, Pidge has informed me that they will break the alliance at the drop of a hat if it suits them. I feel like I'm a little bit on my own now. Fortunately, I'm playing the guild and I just need the game to go on forever. So I don't have to make any big commitments unless it's to stop somebody else from winning the game. And honestly, a lot of the game goes by. And there are a lot of conversations every round about how to stop the other teams from potentially winning. The conversations usually went something like this. This is how they win. Because all BG has to do I, I is ship it. Like, they're allied, right? They need yeah. four strongholds. Oh, BG hasn't they moved own... yet, right? They own the advice. They have... right. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so they, they, they mm. can uh, ship in here, move here, get two for three, and then the ally will just do a, a full 20 on two X each. Um, Fremen, would you be open to uh, dropping a guy in Tabber and uh, throwing? And then we can be doubly sure that there's nothing, no funny business will go on here? Sure, as long as you agree not to traitor. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay, I'll pass. Sounds right. like what the guild will do. <laughs> this is optimal guild play right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, 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 no ounce like, of sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, we are not joking. It's literally the thing to do. Like, yeah, you know, this is like reflects my real life. So, how are you finding the game so far, Roski? Uh, I'm stressed. <laughs> Even though <laughs> I I've done nothing but yeah. sit here, I did fight once, but. Just trying to figure out what you to won do. your fight. Which yeah, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's what matters. You have one hundred percent win rate. Just, <laughs> just remember. Just so you know, if if you die and like lose the game, then it's absolutely fine and valid. Yeah. Nope. It's actually so fun because you can just go around collecting spice, and just be like a pet to everyone <laughs> without caring. I mean, All it right. took me like eight months before I won a game of Dune. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm using my special Karama thing that allows me to play worthless cards as Karama cards okay. to prevent you from using your advantage of going wherever you want. Ooh, you must okay. go in order, and you're first. So enjoy. Interesting. I think they might go for a win here. Mm, mm. Yes, Agreed. I agree. Because we could definitely conspire here, like me, Atreides, and Gil, yeah. to like, yeah. fill up some stuff. Yeah. That might... So I, so I, can, can, I can ship one into Carthag. Better yet, what you yeah. can do is you could ship two to Carthag, and you could move one over to Siege Tabber, and uh, I'll let you throw to me, and I won't steal a leader or kill it or any nonsense like that. And that would block two strongholds and prevent and can, their win attempt. Like, so, 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 so my offer is as follows. Uh, I ship one in here, uh, Guild ships one in here, and moves maybe there. Uh, you move there, and I move there. And, and you throw both. to me here, correct? Yeah, you throw to me there, I throw to you there. Okay, okay. and you're not going to kill my leaders, right? Atreides and Harkonnen? Yeah. No, no. Yes. Phone fights are no leaders, no traders, no leader ceiling. 
No yeah. voicing it's, cards. It's intentionally yeah. losing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, intentionally okay, losing the simplest I'm, I'm ways possible. I'm happy as long as like you're throwing it one, so it's fine, I guess. Over here, so I control Kartak. So I throw to him and Arakin, so he controls Arakin. Okay, so I'm at two then. That, right. Okay. But then that means that you die here, basically. That's my point. So we spent like 30 minutes working out this complicated deal to prevent another team from winning. I have to extend myself a little bit so I can block up the strongholds because only two players can be present in a stronghold at a time. So if I just ship one and another player just ships one, it's impossible for a different faction to come in and try to fight as well. Unfortunately, after working all of this out, the Emperor decides to launch a full-scale assault on my stronghold. Not ideal. Yeah, Oscar, you're kind of getting screwed over here. This is bad. I feel good. Uh, I don't know about that me. one. <laughs> They're going to voice you to use or not use a card. Yeah, they can basically voice you to use the last gun, right? And if you lose the fight, you have to discard the last gun. Yeah, I was going to throw it away. I don't want it anyway. Too dangerous. Guild, you have your first and have two fights. Okay. You can choose which one you want to do first. I will fight here first. All right, there's a throne fight, so usually for a throne fight, we just take the leaders and discard any cards we want to discard. Okay, so that one's over. Now we fight here. Emperor has the voice and can do whatever. Oh, yeah, what do you want to voice? Want with it? Um, I'm going That's to say uh, you must not use the last gun. Not use the last gun, right? No, no. last gun will be played. Huh. Yeah, no, well, I don't know if it will heal the card. Both leaders die. That's a full dial by the guild. Yeah. Guild wins it. I thought you had two cards. So Emperor loses their poison. Fuck yes, let's go. Hallelujah. So now so much time goes by without me really doing anything. It's turn four when I made that last play. It'll be turn seven until another play is forced. And over that stretch of turns, there are a couple of weak plays to try and win the game, but nothing that serious. Pidge and I are able to negotiate the board in such a way that it prevents anyone else from winning. And there are even a couple of chances for us to break our alliance, and we managed to stay strong all the way up until this point. But now the biggest threat to our game plan is about to come. The Emperor and Bene Gesserit Alliance are going to make a play to win it all. Oh, yeah, I think you should weather control it, right? They start out by playing weather control, which allows you to move the Coriolis Storm a certain number of spaces, and they move it just enough spaces to trap the Bene Gesserit forces inside of this stronghold. Oh, clever fuck. Which is really important because you're not allowed to move troops through a storm, so nobody else can contest the Bene Gesserit on this spot. It's pretty much a lockdown stronghold for this turn, so they only need to figure out how to get three more strongholds to win the game. Uh, Emperor, wow, what, what do you think? Do, do you think we do this this turn? I mean... You don't get the last again, so... Let's see. <laughs> do, do, we, do we bring it home? I mean, if if uh, if we are able to get in four strongholds, then I think we win. But I'm not sure if that's possible. I mean, that's typically how it works. I mean, we we <laughs> have. All right, Emperor. If you give me, um, fifteen spice, I will block two X for you. Are you even considering it? I mean, I am seriously considering it. <laughs> I am not sure if it helps us enough because. Hmm. Say the terms again. Right, so Melster will agree not to block strongholds with Fremen. Well, that... They will not end their turn in a territory in which either of two are, in a stronghold in which either of two are, so that no one else can go. Which in other terms means they cannot ship anywhere else other than Sistabur unless they move out. If you and agree to those I terms, will then... go into 2x and block it for you. Okay, yeah. So that effectively prevents uh, blocking. Correct. Yes. Okay, so just to understand the agreement. The agreement is Harkonnen will ship to 2x and block it. Okay. Atreides will not ship anywhere else other than Siege Tabor unless they move out. They in game ship. terms, like at the moment, uh, Atreides and Fremen or Atreides and Guild could block enough strongholds that they can't go for the win. I'm basically saying that I'll block a stronghold for you and throw to you, and I'll make sure my ally doesn't clog up the stronghold so you can shoot your shot, but you have to pay me a lot. Because okay. I think I have better odds of winning uh, with 15 spice, and maybe they don't win it than just waiting till stall out. I will pay two. Uh, it's already there. Ship two here. Move one here. And uh, there you are. Uh, well, do you want to use the karma now, maybe? Yeah, yeah, probably. Guild, go. Hey, the same deal to... as before. I'm forcing you to go. Okay, so we're going to fight here. What an absolutely disgusting situation. 
Not only have we lost the other people at the table who are willing to work with us to stop other people from winning, but now I don't even get to go last to respond to the threat. I have to go right now. And there are a few open strongholds right now without anybody defending. And I still have the last gun weapon and I'm playing against a Bene Gesserit alliance. So they can force me to play my last gun into a shield and have me blow up all of my troops. This is a puzzle within a puzzle within a puzzle and I am incredibly confused at this moment. I have no idea what to do. I'm scared. I want to go home. But I take a few minutes to think. Yeah, so I have an offer to make uh, pitch and uh, guilt. Okay. Yeah, let's go. So I, I am bindingly, I can't block you guys. But I can, however, offer you a deal where, like, I want to collect this spice, right? So yeah. I'll offer you a free stronghold in, say, Karatak or Arakeen. I'll throw it to you guys, and you will have a free, a f one free safe stronghold. But in return, I will leave this one. So Which, guild, for example, how does that work? Like, uh, uh, for it's example, basically, Natrades ships here, Fremen or Guild ship here, and Natrades just yeah. moves out. But yeah, the, so deal, the, deal, the, deal, the deal terms were that you were not shipping in any territory other than Sistabo unless you move out. Uh, so Atreides, could also, That's... if you could throw there as well, like leave one troop. No, no, I'm not. I'm not no, allowed no, that's to. That's not possible. Not Why not? Possible, bitch. But the, the deal, deal is that he's leaving two strongholds open. He's not blocking yeah. two strongholds. Right. So, okay. So basically, they are gonna go for the win, right? And they've made a deal where I cannot block two strongholds. I so see. my offer to you is, one of you, say for example, I, the guild, the guild goes all in in Arakeen, moves one in Kartak. I move one into Kartak move these here, and then you, as Fremen, can just go full up into it. And yeah, I, mean, I forgot to revive again, by the way. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'm going now. I'll go into... Let's see here. Yeah, you guys have to ship a lot. Like, you really have to ship a lot. Because you've got to fight by well, the Emperor. Oh, okay, with our numbers, yeah, what is it? They're at 10 plus 3, 13, okay. So you would need to send 14 and send 1 to, like, Arakeen, or, like, Send some over here. I don't know. No, no. E move one into Arakeen. I'll throw to you in Arakeen. Move the one right, to Boris yeah. So if you, sh if you ship 13 and then move one, yeah. Right. Okay, this works Honestly, right. and then, of course, the Kratrades you're throwing in um, Arakeen, right? Yep. Wow, what, a, what an in interesting series of deals. All right, so that's my turn. I spend one spice. Go here. Move this here. Um, actually, I just realized a mistake we may have made. Atreides, would you be able to confirm this information? Well, no, I'm, I'm asking, I sent you a message in chat. I, I know one person that has it. It's been a while. I don't know what the Emperor has, but I know uh, BG has that card. Right, okay. Uh, shit. Um, Guild, you're fucked. Okay. <laughs> oh? Um, what do you mean? And you just told me BG has a card. Because he has a shield. Right, so what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, yeah, but Guild is going first. Guild... Guild ditches the last gun there, and True, then actually. the life moves on. That's a wild first game of Dune. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're seeing it all right here. Mm -hmm. So that conversation was actually way longer and way more confusing before I edited it down to this. My brain was melting at this point, but we finally figured out a way to potentially stop the Bene Gesserit and the Emperor Alliance from winning. We send a lot of troops into these strongholds, and as long as we don't lose the fights, we should be able to stop them from winning this turn. But it's going to be close, and I can just throw away my last gun so that they can't force a shield explosion and kill all my troops. And in realizing that the victory this turn would be much more difficult than they expected, the Emperor proposes an interesting deal. Uh, how many worms are in the deck? Five? There are six wars in total. So one's practically and, guaranteed. And yeah, one's guaranteed. Thanks. Well, let's just. Uh, I'm going to propose a deal with the guild, and that is, um, I throw to you here, and uh, the next worm we ally. <laughs> I'm going to throw a fight to you here, so you don't lose your troops here, and the next time there's a nexus, we ally. I wouldn't accept it. Hmm. Oh. Just Would you not now? This, this, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's interesting. It is interesting. Oh, cool. I mean, Oski, think what we've been through. I haven't backstabbed you this entire time. We have been through a lot, but remember, but, but, you but did what's say the, the grace part? period was over after the second worm came through. <laughs> <laughs> Emperor, you have a deal. Yes. In... Wow, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Wild. Wow, okay. I, I see how it is. BG, I mean, <laughs> open up. What a beautiful moment. You know how much wow. I can do Know how much I can screw you the guild if if uh, if we ally, because you know what? Like, do you know what cards I have? Like, you're gonna need help with revivals, because I mean, uh... like, there's no money left after the, those two ally. 
I, I, I don't need much money, to be honest. So I betrayed Pidge and the offensive is over. Now it's just me and the Emperor trying to stall this game out to the very end. Pidge, I'm sorry, but sacrifices had to be made. And we have a worm. Worm and it was in the same territory, so it doesn't matter. Nexus time. Bindingly, you break the alliance with me. God fucking damn it. <laughs> uh, what are you two doing? How are you staying with each other? BG, if they uh, stall out, mine's the easiest victory condition. Uh, uh, Fremen, I think we should ally because I have two Karamas. Uh, now he's keen on saying I, that. I'm pretty sure me and BG actually have the best chance of winning here, opposed from these two. If we allied. You know what, sure. I like a friend and BG yeah. alliance. Get that still our victory. Can I discuss with Jay in a separate room real quick? Yo. Okay, how, how do you want to play this? Oh, I mean, we will have to wait and see what they do, and then... Yeah, just basically stop the win and to turn 10 and then... Okay. <laughs> we'll go for the full stall. Unfortunately, that would be a little bit harder than anticipated. On the very next round, there would be another plot to get me to use my last gun to destroy myself. Speedballing out here. Could I just go in both places? If I voice last gun, they can kill 13 forces of theirs. Since I go first, I choose fight first. This is true. If they, if they go away, we get both strongholds and we win. And if they go here, I just voice no last gun. Yeah, I would I would just do it. Honestly, yeah. Why not? With with everything, I guess. Just ship one, move two. Sorry, ship two, move uh, move one. So the Bene Gesser is gonna attack me at both of the strongholds I'm currently in. And remember, the Bene Gesser ability is that they can force me to use a weapon even if I don't want to. So they can force me to use my last gun, they can play a shield and blow up all of my troops. And unfortunately, if I run away, they get enough strongholds to win the game. So I'm forced to fight here. I'm once again put into another terrible situation. We're going for the win or we're screwing guild. Yeah, it's one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're fine then, don't worry. Like, they're, they're losing all 13 of these no matter what. Mm. Unless they, like, move it away and we win. In which case, it's also win, yeah. Yeah. Basically, the, the only thing you have to know is that one thing is getting blown up and you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, but the, the rest uh, is up to you. Yeah. You knew what it was like to be on my alliance, Oski. Now you know what it's like to fight me. <laughs> uh, oh boy. They thought I was screwed. They thought I had no options and I was going to lose all of my troops and just be out of the game. But what they don't realize is I've been holding on to a special card this entire game. It's called Truth Chant, and it allows me to publicly ask one player a single yes or no question about the game state that must be answered publicly. And the game pauses until an answer is given. That player must answer yes or no truthfully. This is a legally binding question. You may be thinking, why does this matter? What is that stupid question going to do? to stop you from getting your troops blown up. Are you going to what? force a last gun explosion, uh, the last gun shield combo in Arakeen? Oh, this is clever. Because you can just move it. Mm hmm Yeah, I see. I will say no. I'm not going to force a last gun shield explosion in Arakeen. So what I did with that question is I made them commit to where they were going to use their shield explosion. If they say, yes, I am going to do it in Arakeen, then I move all of my troops out of Arakeen and I avoid the explosion. If they say no, like they did here, then I just move my troops to Arakeen and they're safe there. True Trance is a very interesting card. And honestly, that was the last real attempt to take the game away from us. And believe me, a lot of discussion was had to figure out how to stop us. Do I, yes, do I, I, I would prefer, I would prefer like, a coin flip because like, like, I guess, like, 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 if you buy us so how the hell are you gonna beat the emperor in in two weeks, right? Like you two, I don't think you guys can even like try and beat him in two weeks. Tell you what, then, um, Harkonnen and Atreides, if we can actually make a standing for round ten to potentially win, will you support us? <laughs> we can win if we put our hearts and minds to it. <laughs> but it just wasn't enough. The Emperor and I managed to defuse every other game winning scenario and we stalled the game out all the way to round 10 for an over five hour game of Dune. And that's uh, GG's guild GG. victory. Yeah, GG, oh. well done. Oh yeah. A five hour battle of confusing scenarios, negotiation, and honestly, just a very high stress. It was a very fun game. I highly recommend it. And if you're looking to join the community, there is a discord, which I'll have linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Alarm has arrived on the planet of June. <laughs> and it's only one.